Hi, welcome. Today is day 38 of my 40 days on the mat, and today we're going to work with some core empowerment. When we think about the area of the core, I think sometimes we can be um, a little confused or misunderstood as to where exactly the core is. Now, if we want to think about the core as in fact the entire body, the core actually starts in the bottoms of the feet. So if you're not taking good care of your feet, that can definitely lead to core dysfunction. Also the inner thighs are a part of the core. But most importantly, we're starting from the pelvic floor. So that means sit bone to sit bone, pubis bone to tailbone, it actually creates a diamond shape. And so that diamond shape, superficially, is going to be the pelvic floor tissue. But the pelvic floor is much more internal than that. And when we contract on the bottom of our body, so anal sphincter, perineum, urethra, as we're contracting up, we actually feel the contraction on the front of our lower front belly. So when you're hearing cues from people saying, draw your navel to your spine, the intention is right, but the cueing is not so much. Because just by me pulling my belly button into my spine does not ensure that I'm actually using my core properly. And in all actuality, you may be actually doing more harm than good. Because you're bringing your waist so narrow to one central point, you're actually putting your spine at that point at risk. So we want to think more so of this upward action, and then what I like to call co-contraction, where the core, as it is, actually stiffens and contracts. I like to give the example of you're in a fight or someone's going to come up and they're going to push you over and what you do is you brace yourself. Your core stiffens up or co-contracts to help fight the resistance of the person pushing against you. You're not necessarily overusing your arms or thinking navel the spine. Your body just automatically does what it needs to do because we have an intelligent body. It knows how to work properly. We've just undid all of that valuable information from when we were a child and kind of resorted to bad posture and bad habits and now we have to retrain those muscles once again. So when we're working with the core, I love using a mini ball, um, a six to eight inch inflated ball and have a little bit of air out of it so that way your core is in control rather than the ball. So start turning sideways and snugly place the ball behind your sacrum. So when we place the ball, it should make you feel like you're sitting more upright, not thrusting the pelvis forward. So we're not exaggerating the lord lordotic arch at all. The legs stay about hips distance, and if you find that you're someone that has been confusing your hip flexors for your core or your deep transversus and pelvic floor for many years, place a block or a rolled up towel between the knees so you can place a little bit of pressure on that block or towel to help reduce the amount of stress and strain on the hip flexors. Just very briefly, the hip flexors, especially the psoas, those are designated movers. So they're helping to move the leg and propel it forward and back. They're not helping to stabilize. In the realm of the core, we always want to stabilize before we mobilize, meaning if I can't hold myself in this position, I'm not ready for movement in this position. Push-up and chaturanga are a great example. So as we sit upright, exhale with the hands gently under the knees. You can keep the hands here the whole time. Exhale like a thumbtack in your sacrum to the ball. Exhale, press the sacrum into the ball and engage on those bathroom muscles. We're feeling that lower frame of the core nice and active and contracted. Keeping the length of the spine, inhale, extend yourself back to about 45 degrees. Inhale through the nose, relax your shoulders, exhale through the nose. Let's start with some alternating arm lifts. Inhale, lift, right arm, exhale, lower it down. At no point, keep working, do you feel like the belly is doming or buckling? Then you know either one, do you have some dystasis recti going on, or two, are you letting your back arch off the ball? Keep that gentle pressure to keep the rectus pulling in or stiffening inward. Let's continue, inhale, drop your shoulder, exhale. I may only lift a few inches and that's fine. If you're finding that you're quaking or you're starting to quiver, it's okay, you're using your deep core muscles as long as you're not feeling hip flexor pain. Inhale and exhale, contract on the pelvic core. Now turn the head towards the arm that's not moving. Inhale and exhale, contract on the pelvic floor. It's really easy just to hang out here and go, well, this isn't so bad. I want you to stay alert and upright. Let's go double time now. Keep going, let's go four. Two more. Last set. And down, arms come up, hold it now. Let's go arm circles, inhale, exhale. Only go as fast with the arms as you can mimic 
or minimize the bouncing. We want to stay as nice and steady. The movement's coming out from the shoulder socket, but the core is keeping you steady. Now reverse it. Relax your shoulders. You can circle up a little bit higher. Keep breathing. Everything is co-contracting. Let's go four, three, two, and one. Release the hands, deep breath in. Exhale, lift with your trunk. Draw forward, seated child. Take a couple breaths. Roll yourself up, sitting nice and tall, hands under the knees, exhale, pelvic tilt, contract the pelvic floor. It feels a little bit like the sit bones are coming towards each other, but it's not a glute squeeze. Inhale, exhale, inhale, ride it back to about the arm's length is probably plenty. Inhale through the nose, and exhale, relax your shoulders. Turn the palms up, we'll work with an upright 100. Pumping up, firm your arms. Notice how my torso is not bouncing. Move from the shoulder, shoulders plug back. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. The firmer I can be here, the less I'm gonna feel bouncing. Contract on the pelvic core. Inhale through the nose and exhale. You can either breathe in a small pulse or you can just take a long inhalation and a long exhalation. Let's go five more breaths. I'd be happy with three to five pulses per inhale and exhale. Keep the arms rotating out. Last breath. Inhale, exhale, lift with your core. Nice job, relax the shoulders. Take a couple breaths. You should be feeling that in your trunk. Now, if you're used to killing yourself in core work, this may just feel really good and really strong. If you're someone that's maybe been using all the outer muscles and all the wrong muscles, you may feel like this is really intense and you might really feel that quake. We have to find that happy medium. Too much is too much, not enough is not enough. All right, one more here in this 45 degree angle series. Inhale, exhale, little tilt in the pelvis. Inhale, keeping the length of the spine. And now again, back to 45 degrees, relax your shoulders. Let's bring the arms up, 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 way up without arching or collapsing. Let's just hold and breathe. Now as you hold and breathe, keeping a really strong pelvic floor, if you can keep that and keep the length of the spine, alternate lifting each leg. As long as you can eliminate any hip flexor discomfort. I can also bring my hands here. Keep breathing, inhale, exhale, strong, firm contraction. Keep the sternum off the navel, but we're not back bending. Let's go three, keep breathing. Let's go two, keep everything hugging tight. And last one. And then hands to the knees, inhale, exhale. Bring yourself up, let's go into a little bound angle. Rock side to side, release your sit bones. Nice deep breath in. And exhale, fold. Exhale, roll yourself up. Bring the knees together, nice job. All right, move your ball. And now if you have a weighted ball, I want you to grab a weighted ball. If you don't have a weighted ball, a hand weight. If you don't have a hand weight, grab a 16 ounce tomato soup can or tomato can um, or a water bottle, something that has a little bit of substance to it, something that's not sloppy and that's gonna fall out of your hands So, If you don't have any weight, you can still continue as you are without a weight. Come to a kneeling position. So in that kneeling position, I'll bring the weight to my heart pelvic neutral so it feels a little bit like I may be tucking my tailbone if you're someone that's used to a fairly sufficient lordotic curve. We want to, in a sense, shorten up and tighten up the front abdominal muscles which have been overstretched and lengthened and lengthen the lower back muscles which tend to be really tight. So as I find that position, elbows wide, ball at the chest, as I shift over to my what would be your right hip. I feel the lower glute contracting because that lower gluteus maximus is a stabilizer for the hip, but I'm not bopping out into my hip. Lift the leg with control and set it out to the side. 
I'll turn my foot to face you so my whole pelvis is open to the length of the mat. Keep the elbows lifted and feel the tailbone relaxing down as I activate up from the pelvic floor into the trunk. Inhale, tip to the right. Exhale, I'm lifting with my oblique. I can check in with myself and I can feel that contraction just by placing my hand on my trunk. Inhale and exhale. Any pinching in the upper glute, lower back, you're probably tilting or lordotic curve in the back. I want you to keep that curve out of it. Just your natural curve is all we want. Inhale, tip and exhale. I should not feel as though my straight leg is floating or I feel strain in my hip flexors. So try to adjust the pelvis in order to accommodate that. Exhale. Nice. Inhale. Exhale. This is five. Keep that upward action. Last one. Nice job. Let's go all the way down now to the right. Lower your weight. Now, if you want to use it as a prop for your hand, great. If you can comfortably place your palm, or if you need to, come to a fist. Turn the fold of the elbow towards the middle finger, and that's going to open up the chest substantially. Again, tailbone moves towards the heel to help open the pelvis. I'm using the upper hip and glute, but I'm definitely feeling no strain in the groin. Inhale. Exhale. Contract as you lower the leg. Inhale and exhale. Try not to plow into your base shoulder. If I look at my leg, it's going straight out from my hip and I'm trying to keep the foot parallel with the floor. That way I'm using the outer glute and the lower gluteus maximus, kind of that swimsuit edge. Exhale when you lower, inhale when you lift. So you can really get that strong core contraction. Three more. Doing good. Now we're going to pulse. Come up. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower it down. Nice job. Grab your weight. Nice deep breath in. Keep neutral. Exhale. Bring it all the way up. Nice job. Let's make it a balance challenge. Bring the leg in slowly and set it down. Nice job. Opposite side. Keep the length. Extend the leg. I like to use the frontage of my mat. That way I know it's straight. I don't have to trust my mental alignment, which sometimes is off. Elbows wide. Watch where the pelvis goes. Just because we default to a certain position doesn't mean that we belong there. Inhale and exhale. Contract. Get the internal action in the body. Inhale, tip and exhale, lift. You should not feel outward pressure when you lift. Inhale, exhale. Yes, you may be feeling the bottom of the glutes, but they should not be working harder than the pelvic core and obviously the obliques. Speed has nothing to do with good core work. Five more. Keep the elbows wide to keep the chest open and keep the obliques firing. Stay with me. Last one. And now lower your ball if you're going to use it as a prop. Great. If not, yes, you're subtly leaning towards the left hand. Fold the elbow forward. I should never lock or sit into the shoulder. Open hips. Flex the elongated leg. And now again, we're lifting through the outside of the leg. Deep breath in. And exhale. When I lift my leg, I should not collapse into my hip. Then I know that I don't quite have the strength yet to get the leg as high as my mind wants it to go. Inhale and exhale. Keep the heel pushing towards the ceiling. I'm just going to check to make sure that when I lift my leg, it's not going forward or back. Five more. Keep breathing, just focus on your breath. Last one. Now come up, let's pulse. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Foot is flexed. Eight, nine, ten. Lower the foot. Ground, reopen the hips if they've kind of collapsed on you. Grab for the ball, deep breath in. Exhale, float it up. Relax your shoulders, bring the leg in. 
Nice job. Release your ball. Cross your ankles and sit back onto your hips. Turn back to the length of the mat and grab your green ball. Roll down slowly. Knees into the chest. Just give yourself a good stretch. Now ball goes under the feet. So if you find one, you don't have a ball today, or two, you find that this is a lot, just go flat footed. Place the ball between the knees. That'll work just fine. So you'll notice that my heels are not directly under my sitting bones. I want to give my lower back some space and the ability to not be majorly compressed on and that the back bend has openness and extension. All right, try to keep the feet more so heel. Probably most people feel more comfortable, but you might find that you can actually place your feet on the top of the ball. So experiment and see what works. We are working the hamstrings. A tight hamstring is, hamstring is not the same as a strong hamstring. So if your hamstrings are tight, doesn't necessarily mean that they're strong. All right, inhale, neutral pelvis. Exhale, press your feet into the ball and launch your hips up off the ball. Chin to chest, arms are at your sides. Either palms face in, elbows bent, what I call robot arm, or arms to the sky. The height is irrelevant. I want you to focus on staying level and feeling like the glutes are moving towards the backs of your knees so that we're not sitting in our lower back and overusing our hip flexors. Now bring your weight more, whoo, fall right off the ball. Bring your weight more into the right leg. Press into that leg, try not to have to fall out to the side. Glue your knees, flex your floating foot, and hold here, hips are level. Inhale through the nose, you're gonna feel that hamstring. Exhale through the nose, if not, be right on the floor. Notice how I'm not that high. Exhale, lower that foot. I'm gonna drop down here to readjust my feet. And then back up, inhale, exhale. Press down with the foot. This is not my strong leg. We'll see how it goes. Inhale. Wow. Like I said, this is my practice. Exhale. Inhale through the nose. And exhale, keep everything strong. I'm gonna bring my arms down on this side. Inhale, hips stay level. And exhale. Exhale, lower it down. Bring the knees into the chest, nice job. If you're a runner, that's a great one to really bring more strength into the hamstrings. Release your feet. Arc your lower back, bring your arms overhead, nice stretch. And now grab your ball with your feet. Place the ball underneath your sacrum. And as you place the ball underneath your sacrum, where your pants are, not necessarily where your shirt is. Keep your left knee bent and extend your right leg. I'll do the same as you. And either clasp behind the hamstring and extend the leg up, really flex through the foot. Draw the leg in without sinking your lower back to the floor. You may find that you can grab onto the calf or ankle. You may find that your hands are on your foot. Just because you can grab your foot, if you're getting all sloppy on yourself, it's not worth it. Inhale through the nose. Keep your right hip pulling down so that the stretch stays more from the sitting bone into the hamstring. Exhale through the nose. If you want, you can roll that top ankle a little bit. And then release the leg down. Again, re-neutral the pelvis, bring the knee in. Grab hold under the hamstring, a good start. Keep the left hip rolling down away from your waistline and extend the leg. Maybe roll the ankle and then flex through the heel. Find an appropriate hold that if you can see my lower back, it doesn't sink into the floor. Try to keep neutral. And say, why don't we just do this on the floor? Well, there's a good stability challenge here. And also, it's a great opportunity for us to feel that arch in our lower back, which is our natural curve, much more apparent than what we would otherwise feel flat on the floor. And exhale, release the leg. Nice job. Readjust your green ball underneath your hips. Neutral pelvis. Left hand comes behind the head. I'll do opposite of you. I'm gonna move my ball, make sure it's totally out of the way. Broadening the upper back, arm stays about hip level. Deep breath in, 
Exhale, I'm gonna lift into flexion, but I'm not jamming my chin to my chest. I'm trying to lift to the bottoms of my shoulder blades without pressing my lower back into the mat. So I feel some strength here. And again, I'm contracting on my pelvic floor. Think about the obliques here. Exhale, reach to your right. I'm feeling a contraction here. If I touch my waistline, inhale, return back to center. Stay steady on your ball. Exhale and inhale. It's a sideways motion. Imagine standing and doing a side curl. Keep yourself steady on the ball. There should be no glute clenching. Four more. Steady. Nice job. Lower the head down. Turn it side to side. Opposite side. Right hand behind the head. Lifting with my trunk, not with my neck muscles. Exhale, lift. I'm not pushing the lower back or clenching the glutes. Keep it nice and neutral. Pelvic floor rises. Deep breath in. Exhale. As I reach to the left, I'm not swinging my hips. Inhale, center. Mentally contract as much as you are physically. One more. And then lower your head down. Again, roll your shoulders. Arch the lower back. Arms reach away from you. Exaggerate that curve. Extend your legs now and just drop your hips side to side. Nice little stretch through the groin and through the oblique. And then arms release back down. Neutral your pelvis. And draw the legs up one at a time. Pelvic floor engages. I should feel some stiffness or co-contracting. Flex the feet. If this is too much on your hip flexors, lower the heels down a notch, and that will definitely let that off for you. Palms face in, arms down, elbows bent, robot arm, or arms come up to the sky. I choose my arm options appropriately based on the ability for me to stabilize. If I'm all over the place, but my ego is like, I gotta have my arms here, this is the most advanced, you're not making the movement even worth your while anymore. You're grabbing at all the wrong muscles. So quality here, quality. Watching not to let the belly steeple out. Keep that co-contraction, that nice stiffening. And let's go five times, double lower the legs. Inhale, I may only lower halfway down, as long as I can keep my belly from popping and my hip flexors from flaring or low back arching. Exhale. Inhale, breathe wide into your lungs. We're not belly breathing. Exhale, contract, 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 contract. Inhale. And exhale, you should not feel this in your neck. Now you can add the arms in. Inhale, arm, draw your arms overhead, relax your shoulders. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, one more. Inhale. And exhale. Either hold it here, if you wanna go for additional five, let's go for it. Inhale, lower, and straighten out the legs. Again, no rotation. Exhale, bend and retrace it back to center. I should not feel my legs rotating out. Inhale, breathe wide into your rib cage. Exhale, the exhale pulls you back to center. Three more. Just because your ego wants you to go to a place doesn't mean your body's capable of that. So listen to your body and work from where your strength level is at right now. And exhale, nice job. Lift your hips, remove your ball, right knee into the chest, give it a nice hug. Awesome. Draw your left leg to the right, that's your bottom leg. Draw your top toes over, lift the hips to twist them so that when you twist, your hips are stacked. Inhale through the nose, use your elbows now, broaden the upper back, and exhale through the nose. Try to relax the glutes and hips to allow the lower back to release. And then back to center, give the knee a nice little hug. And release the foot, readjust yourself, you might feel crooked. Opposite knee in, give it a nice hug. 
As you bring the leg across the center line, use the toes of the bent knee to hop your hips so that they're more stacked. That's going to make a big difference on your sacrum, especially for women. Use your elbows, press down, and lift your chest so it's much more broad. The opposite shoulder feels like it's much more easily in the mat. It's going to be way more comfortable and way more worth it. Open your free arm. You the cactus or T. You want to adjust one more time? Fully rotate the head. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. Let go of any tension, anything that might have been bothering you today, just totally surrender that into the floor. There's this amazing thing that happens, this empowering aspect that comes with good quality core work. And we not only feel physically strong, but feel mentally, emotionally, and energetically strong. Back to center, give the knee a good hug, and then release yourself to center. I like bound angle, but feel free just to extend the legs. Arms come overhead. Now let the lower back exaggerate the curve, relax your shoulders, close your eyes, and enjoy the next few rounds of breath, surrendering yourself into the earth. As you fully inhale and exhale and feel your ribs and belly rise and fall, take a few moments here and soften from your ego for a moment. And what can you let go of? What can you surrender? And just fully accept into the moment. Many times we live with this illusion that life should be so perfect and then we punish ourselves when it's not. Or worse yet, we punish the people around us, the people that we love, the people that support us. And so just heavy your body and surrender to all of those unrealistic expectations. And at least for these next few breaths, these next few moments, let's try to be okay with how things are right now. your arms down to help you close the legs. Draw yourself to one side. Use your top hand for help not to strain the neck or groin as you rise up. And come to the center of your mat. Thank you for your time, your energy, and your effort today. And it's amazing what one little small prop can do to make a difference. But now the real work begins. How will you take what you learned on your mat, soften your ego, and take it into your everyday life? If everything is in fact each and every day an opportunity for us to learn more about ourselves, what have you learned today so far? From my heart to yours, from my soul to yours, I look forward to seeing you again on the mat really soon. Namaste. And before you leave, one more really quick thing. If you're really loving my videos and you really find that you're getting something out of the content and the information that I'm sharing with you, I want to give a shout out to ask you to share your, the videos with your friends and family. Post them on your Facebook page, your Twitter page, and allow people and let people know why you're finding these videos so helpful and, and really enjoying the practice along the way. Thank you again for your energy and commitment to practice. Until I see you again for real now, namaste.